How We Make Movies is brought to you by Microsoft Surface, Assimilate, Azo, Moviola, and Canon Hollywood. It's shot in front of a live audience in Los Angeles and hosted by the film collective We Make Movies. Oh, you, you wrote the film and you talked about really capturing the city as another character and how you captured that magical essence of LA at night, you know, having the same um, mood as it did in the 1940s and 30s. Mm -hmm. um, with writing a noir film today, especially filming in LA, when I first read the description, I was, I was like, how are you gonna pull that off? LA is so bleached and sunny and you know commercialized and there's just ads everywhere and it's not the same city it was in the 30s and 40s, but you really did capture that. And part of it too was in your writing. Um, as a writer, how did you, how difficult is it to kind of reinvent a genre and, and make it new, but really still capture that essence? Well, I've always loved noir and film noir. It's been sort of my favorite. Ever since I was a kid, I was reading little pulp paperbacks and my parents thought I was odd, but I always loved the sort of crime story. Um, I always thought, and it's, you know, they provide great roles for actors, you know, really meaty roles. People can uh, really chew into both men and women, great roles for women. And, uh, I just, I, I'd always sort of had this idea about a cab driver and it kind of went back and forth from cab driver was an ex-boxer. I was just always thought a cab driver was a great character. But I just sort of relied on, I've been writing scripts now for a number of years and I'll never say I'm good at it, but you get more and more comfortable at it. And when I came up with a basic idea of this cab driver that picks up a fare, his investment banker, sort of like a Bernie Madoff type character, uh, and you find out pretty early on that he's on the run. He's got to get out of the country before the shit hits the fan, basically. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I came up with a couple of the twists. I said, let's sit down and write this. And I really wanted to capture Los Angeles. I love that Los Angeles is the home to many great film noirs. I mean, arguably the best film noirs are set here, Double Indemnity and Sunset Boulevard and, and the classics and uh, In a Lonely Place were, were, that Bogey made. And so as I was writing it, I just made sure to try to hit those touchstones. And one thing I'm really proud of the film is that if you sit back and list the, you know, the LA landmarks, there's LAX, there's the Sunset Strip, you see Disney Hall, you see Santa Monica Pier, you see um, Sam's Hofbrau House, you see all these sort of classic LA landmarks. And what the cab ride was able to do is I literally plotted, I'd be like, oh, when the cab gets here, would it be better to go down Wilshire or take a right and go through Brentwood? Mm -hmm. And, you know, so I could, as I was writing, envision some of the scenes and some of the landmarks that would make it into the film. And, uh, you know, first and foremost, of course, is the characters. And, and uh, this film does really well with that. It's a bit of a slow burn, and you get to know the cab driver and the banker very well. It's almost 30 minutes before um, Faye, played by Carly Pope, gets in the cab. Mm -hmm. So you're really invested in these characters once a different kind of energy you know, enters that cab. But uh, no, I love, love noir. The new film, White Orchid, is also noir, but it's much more of an elevated genre piece. It takes you a little while to figure out, like, wow, this is kind of film noir. Uh, so uh, I, don't, I don't know how you reinvent it. I certainly didn't reinvent it, but you just try to write a good story and uh, try to find a new little twist. And you know, our little twist was an ultra low budget film it's a film noir, um, a genre piece, and I hadn't seen too many of those that were sort of a pure noir. Mm.